there was an opportunity to have truth in testing. And again, it was Jim Sensenbrenner who killed it. But this raises another issue. What kind of action needs to be taken? Oh, uh, we the people have a responsibility here to make our voice heard. And I'm talking about emails, faxes. Written word is always better, but be aware that they're still irradiating all mail going to Washington, D.C. Send it locally to your reps. They can get it to them far quicker. We need to start demanding action. Simple requests are not being met, and they seem to misunderstand us and think that this is a request. We now have to stand up, we the people, and demand from our representatives that they fix this. Why do you suppose it is that we have this long history of Congress not doing any of these things and pretty much letting the Second Amendment be destroyed by a government agency? Well, let me put it to you this way. Republican, Democrat, House, or Senate, most, most in Congress are trying to pretend that they don't know what, the, what game the ATF is, is running on the American people. There are a few exceptions of members who have stood up and maintained holds on the acting director for his ridiculous behavior. There's others like Congressman Gingry and, and Lynn Westmoreland who, who introduced and, and co-sponsored the Fairness in Firearms Testing Act, which was introduced this session but still went nowhere again. We can only hope that John Conyers can bring it up at some point. So it doesn't matter. Party lines don't matter. Sides of the Congress don't matter. I can't tell you the motivations, but I can tell you that they know about it and we keep throwing it up in their face and they keep trying to make the firearms issue not an issue this uh, election cycle. Again, we're going to have to demand some, some redress to grievance. This is Talking to America. My guest today is Len Savage. We're talking about abuses by the ATF, and I'm your host, Aaron Zellman. Len, I have a question for you. You are a firearms manufacturer. You have a great deal of knowledge about firearms. How has the ATF used their abuses and dirty tricks against you personally? Well, unfortunately, the ATF has consistently used its regulatory authority over me as a licensee to lean on me and shut down designs by declaring products unlawful, sometimes retroactively like we spoke about in the gang, even though they were previously uh, approved. And this has a chilling uh, effect on all FFL holders by making an, an example out of me. The ATF hopes to show the industry and show to them and to the gun culture what happens to those who dare to show federal courts their tricks and deceptions under oath? And flagrantly violating United States Code by doing it, you know, Title 18, Section 242. They're using their regulatory authority uh, in order to exact vengeance. I mean, it's this is a civil rights issue. I mean, they are specifically prohibited from doing this. And that means that any time they put a conversion device on one of my submitted designs, in order to say, well, this is illegal, it's a machine gun, because we could add this conversion device to make it go full auto. That means they contrived that specifically to deny me my constitutional rights. Think about that for a minute. And this really goes back to people say, well, how is this happening? Well, Nazi law means using Nazi methods of enforcement. In Gateway to Tyranny, it's plainly documented that the GTA that granted police powers to the ATF, is Nazi law. There's no gray here. The GCA is Nazi law written in 1938. And unfortunately, the only way uh, to enforce Nazi law is, is means Nazi methods. Secret testing, uh, using their powers to lean on people who speak out against them. I'm not surprised. The law on its face is, is absolutely anti-constitutional. Ever since uh, reading Gateway to Tyranny, I guess I've had a shift in attitude. There is no fixing this agency. They need to be disbanded, broken up, and people prosecuted. I guess one point we should make here is that Gateway to Tyranny really is a book called Gun Control Gateway to Tyranny, and it's a side-by-side -side documentation of the 1938 Nazi gun control laws and the 1968 Gun Control Act as authored by the late Senator Thomas Dodd of Connecticut, and that's available on the jpfo.org site. Well, okay, so we have a situation where we have a Congress that doesn't care about the Second Amendment being destroyed, and the Heller decision, by the way, won't stop any of this, in case someone out there is still engaged in a grand fantasy that Heller has solved all of our problems. We have federal judges, for the most part, who don't care about the truth, 
we have an agency that has made it very clear, and maybe you can elaborate on this, as to what their definition is of any type of weapon that they consider to be a machine gun. Would you like to do that? Sure. This agency has documented the fact that a shoestring is a machine gun. They tried to take it back and say, no, a shoestring is only a machine gun if tied to a semi-automatic to induce full auto fire, in which case the shoestring is back to being a machine gun, a, a conversion device. Uh, any semi-automatic weapon is at risk. Any multi-barreled weapon. Your grandfather's uh, double rifle, say you've got somebody who's got a six or an eight bore, and you pull one trigger and both go off, well, you've just now fired more than one round per function of the trigger. Same thing for shotguns. Side by side, you know, the older ones, how many go off when you tilt them up past a 45-degree angle, when, no matter which trigger you pull, uh, because they don't have a spring for the little bob weight. Over-unders, same deal. In essence, criminalizing a culture, criminalizing firearms possession, and all while circumventing the Constitution, United States Congress, Department of Justice, and doing what they want. You have to wonder who's writing the agenda. Well, would you like to comment on what you think the agenda might be? Disarm the American people. Establish authority through fear. But establishing authority through fear, trying to create a chilling effect on people who testify to the truth, they better consider that they're checking whether there's gas in the tank by looking in it with a lighted match when they do that. The American people who, who are tolerant and who historically put up with a l loads of crap before they say they've had enough, saying that they've had enough. That doesn't mean violence. That could mean going to the voting booth and absolutely turning everything on its ear. It could mean doing nothing but standing on your politician until he gives you in writing his stance on what he's going to do in reining in ATF abuse. I mean, come on, how long does the list have to be? How many Glovers, Wrens, Olufsen's, let's see, Horsley's? I can't even keep up with all the names anymore of the people that they've just outright oppressed. And I think, even though they like to be called Batsy, I think ATF really fits because uh, they're America's terrorist force. They terrorize Americans. How many people, after seeing what Glover went through, said, you know, brother, it just ain't worth owning an AR-15 and sold it after Glover was sentenced? How many people did they, through sheer fear, you know, uh, give up their Second Amendment rights? Or maybe their First Amendment rights? Fear of speaking out on the Internet. 